Hello, God Squatters. It's Pastor John here. If you remember before Easter, we had been talking in Hebrews 11 and 12 about the race of faith. So if you can turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12, we're going to pick that up again in verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Well, we just celebrated Easter and remembering that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead for us. The first part of that says so that we are not supposed to allow things to weight us down because we have a race to run. And what we need to do is keep our eyes focused on Jesus. Well, what I had in my heart uh, for this message and for some of the messages to come is to talk about the Ten Commandments, talking about those uh, those commandments that God gave to Moses that were important back in the time of the Old Testament, but are still important today. So let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteronomy is the fifth book in the Bible, and we're going to look at chapter 5. Deuteronomy chapter 5. We'll start in verse 7. And we're going to talk about the Ten Commandments. I made these out of cardboard. Of course, God carved the real Ten Commandments out of stone. And he listed on there 10 things that were really, really important for the Israelites to do so that they would be walking with him as their God. We're going to break this down. We're not going to go through all the Ten Commandments today, but we are going to start with the first two, which do go together. So join me in Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 7. God says, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves a carved image. Now, um, this does have to do with the other verse, because remember, when we're talking Hebrews 12, we're not supposed to let anything weigh us down or keep us from walking with Jesus. And really, these first two commands have to do with that. We don't want anything to come between us and God. Now, when I first read these, I think of people, um, you know, from thousands of years ago, maybe even in Jesus' time. And I guess there are some remote peoples nowadays, too, where they bow down and they worship before a god of, of stone. So if you can look behind me, I have an image of something here. And it conjures up to me people worshiping and bowing down. Hubba bubba, hubba bubba, or something like that, in front of some kind of an image, uh, a statue. Well, God isn't really talking just about that, although that would be putting another God before him. But there are other things that we could have in our lives that we would put on an altar and, in a sense, worship or maybe put before God. It might be something like, recognition. You know, some of you do a good job and, and, and you get trophies for things like sports, and that's great, but we don't want to put that on the altar of our life. Or it could be possessions, money, toys, or it could be as you get older, things like cars and homes and cabins and boats. Could be fun things we like to do, like Legos. Or it could represent something that we're good at because some people are really good at doing Legos. But notice those things could go on the altar of our lives. And we could, in a sense, worship those things by putting those things before God. God doesn't want us to do that. In the second commandment, it says we're not supposed to have any carved image that would be, again, something that we'd worship. Now, again, we might think, well, pff, we don't do anything like that. But I want you to think for a minute. Um, in your bedroom, <laughs> you might have posters of maybe like movie stars or sports heroes or musicians. You may have other things that you're interested in that decorate your room. And there is nothing wrong with those things. But my question for you is, is that the only thing that you have that's decorating your room? Because if, if that's what we have all around our room, does that mean that that's the thing that we think about most? And maybe even think about those things more than God, that would be a concern. 
So when we look at that command about images, think about what are the things that really represent who we are. And if there's a lot of other things other than God, we may need to put some of those things aside and begin to focus on God. When I talk about putting God first above anything else, one of the stories I think about is found in the book of Genesis. Remember Abraham, who's called the father of our faith? Well, God had promised him that he would be the father of many nations, but there was a problem. He was getting older, his wife was older and said to be barren, meaning she couldn't have any children. And yet God said that he was going to be, Abraham was going to be the father of many nations. How could this be? But then because of the miraculous power of God and because Abraham believed God, Abraham and Sarah were given a son, Isaac, in their old age. So this was, of course, something that they had been waiting for, had prayed for, had believed for. Isaac was really, really important. And to have a child is very, very important. But even a child, even a family member, even a friend cannot come between us and God. And God put Abraham to the test. If we read in Genesis chapter 22, God calls Abraham to go to Mount Moriah and to sacrifice his son to God on an altar. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. To take that, which is so precious, a son, and, and to sacrifice that to God. But Abraham was willing to do that. It wasn't until he had his son on the altar and was ready to, to put him to death that God stopped him through his angel and said, now I know that you put me first. Well, we can learn some things from that. Now, God is not expecting us to go around killing our family members, although I know sometimes you might be tempted to kill your brother or sister. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. But God does want us to put those things that are important in our lives before him and to let him know that we love him more than that, more than sports, more than riches, more than recognition, more than hobbies, more than talents, more than our friends, even more than our family. And so I encourage you to do that, to in your time with God, actually put those things that are important to you on the altar before God and declare to him that God, you are more important. Jesus, you are more important than sports. You are more important than my friends. You are more important than whatever it might be, what people think of me or, or awards or people thinking I'm cool. Put those things before God and declare that he is first. The second thing I want you to do is the other thing we had mentioned about the second command, look around your room. Is there anything in your room that would indicate that you're a follower of Jesus? If not, you may want to start to put something up there so that if someone were to come into your room, they would know that, yes, you might like sports, you might like music, you might like this and that, but they would also see that you love Jesus because we want our lives to be a light to other people so they're going to see God in the way we act but in everything that we do and, and even the things that we possess and find dear. Let me pray with you. Father God, I thank you for the boys and girls that are listening. Let them know that I care, but more than that, that let them know how much you love them and you care for them and all, all of the needs that they have. Let them know that you are their shepherd and you don't want them to want Father, I pray this week, help them to put you first in all that they do. If there are things that are pulling them down and keeping them from the faith race, help them to see that, that they will lay those things aside or at least put them on the altar so that they will become sanctified and holy to you. Because that way, now they'll be able to use those things for your glory. We thank you how you are working in our lives, how you are our savior, our healer, our provider. We give you the glory and the praise this day in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. All right. Well, it was good talking to you. I hope to see you soon. It was really fun to see some of your faces this last Sunday. Hopefully we can get together really soon. Have a great week. Keep your eyes on the Lord.